Hi everyone, my name is Nikki Trenitska and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a very, very cool cake that is very special to me and very dear and near to my heart. It has been passed down in my family for quite a while and it's called Autumn Leaves. The story behind it is that it is a cake that my grandma would make for my mom and my aunt when they would start school because it is autumn leaves and it's fallen leaves. It looks like fallen leaves on snow. The reason why I'm making this cake is because it is my little sister's 15th birthday today and fortunately I'm very far away. I will be making it here in New York in my kitchen and my grandma will be making it in Odessa in Ukraine and my mom and my sister are going to be making it together in Spain and Valencia and that way we can all celebrate. It is a pretty old recipe. The measurements themselves are not written in. It just says it is on a typewriter, some parts are scratched out, some parts are added in, so I had to do some really cool research into USSR cuisine and USSR measurements. It's such a such an important recipe for me. I would really love to share it and I would really love to give you guys an opportunity because I don't think there's a recipe like this online anywhere. It's pretty easy to make once you get a hang of it. I've had a few missteps along the way, but what can you do? And now let's get on with the video and get on with the recipe. The first thing that we're going to start on is our dough. At first, two cups of sifted all-purpose flour. It is very important that the flour is sifted when you're putting it into the bowl because it's going to help the margarine incorporate into it. And we're now going to sift this into the bowl. We're going to add 200 grams or seven ounces or one cup roughly of margarine. I'm not sure what the correct measurements for that are. We will figure it out. So I'm going to do a guesstimate, I'd say, and I'm going to put this into a cup on my scale until I get 200 grams. It's very important that it's cooled before you start incorporating it into the dough because it is important that you're able to cut it into slight pieces. The next thing that I'm going to add is a cup of sour cream, one egg yolk, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to take a rubber spatula and I'm going to gently start mixing it all in, kind of slicing it in half. I'm figuring things out as we go, as you can 100% see. My grandma said that you can do it with a spoon, you could do it with a spatula, you could also do it with two knives. It is important to be working really quickly because you don't want to melt the margarine too much. I'm going to start tossing it and squeezing it between my fingers as I'm working it like this. This is a very sticky dough, so I'm going to add a little bit of more flour because everyone has very different types of sour cream and everyone has very different types of margarine that you're going to end up using. It is all going to be different levels of flour, so it might actually be more of a three and a half cup of flour in the end for the ingredients that I ended up using. Continue mixing it until you see that there are no more little crumbs like this on the bottom left over. It needs to be fully incorporated. I'm done mixing this, so I'm going to set it into the refrigerator. The reason why you cover the dough when you let it chill is for the moisture to not escape, which is why I'm using saran wrap instead of a little towel. And this is going to chill in the refrigerator for about two to three hours. Just took out the dough from the fridge. It is still pretty soft, but that's all right because that is serving our purpose. We're now going to turn it out. I started preheating the oven. I'm going to divide it into about eight sections. So as you can see, it just needs to fit about this. The sizes and the amount of layers that you're going to end up getting is going to vary depending on what what type of plate you end up choosing. Keep these scraps like this. Don't touch them yet. If you're using parchment paper, then don't worry. It's going to be fine. It's not really going to stick that much. But if you are just using the baking tray, um, I suggest that you dust it with flour so that it doesn't stick as much. And now I'm going to prick the dough all over, kind of like pie dough, because it is going to bubble and this is going to allow the air to escape. Now I'm going to place it into the oven. The scraps that I told you to not get rid of, these are going to be the fallen leaves that are going to decorate the top of your cake. It's okay if they fall apart. It's okay if they turn into pieces. 
I say prick a few of the bigger pieces, but don't worry about all of them. It's okay if some of them are a little darker. It's okay if some of them are a little lighter. This is going to go into the oven right now. It is so thin and it is most likely to burn really, really quickly. So you just have to keep an eye on the dough. taking it out and as you can see it is slightly golden around the sides and still slightly pale in the middle. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a very large plate and I'm going to transfer the circular piece of dough onto that large plate because this is where the layers of the cake are going to go on and I'm going to go and take a slightly smaller plate and I'm going to transfer the smaller pieces onto here. I am keeping the pieces of dough that I've cut up in the bowl in the fridge just because it ensures that the margarine that has been added into the mixture of dough um, stays as hard as possible. That is going to ensure the layers and the flakiness of the dough. And I'm going to repeat the steps exactly. You can talk now. <laughs> Did I distract you? A little bit. This is what my stack of layers looks like. Looks pretty cute. I'm going to start on my creams. I'm going to make two different types of cream. It is very important that the cream that you make first is the cream that is butter and yolk based because the second one is just going to be whipped egg whites with sugar and that absolutely cannot fall. So we're going to leave that for last. For the yolk and butter based uh, cream, I took out the butter from the fridge and uh, I might even a little bit melt it. So I got the French president butter because European butter has a higher fat content and uh, higher content of milk solids. I find that European butter works so much better. I've read a bunch of things on how European butter does make a, 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 enough of a difference for it to be a consideration whenever you're shopping for ingredients. This is not sponsored by President Butter, by the way. God, I wish. We're now going to crack seven eggs. It is lucky because I have seven eggs left over exactly. We're going to separate them into egg whites and egg yolks. Try to keep the egg whites in the bigger bowl if you have two different sizes because I think they're going to grow the most. Always crack them on a hard surface so that little things don't get into it and it's also just more sanitary I think this way. Oh boy. This is ruined. Good thing I have extra egg whites in the fridge. Wow. Now it's very important that you put your egg whites aside into the fridge while you're working with this. I melted my butter a little too much and I ended up needing to freeze it a little bit. It needs to be basically room temperature for it to work. So we're going to add that into here. So this is going to be our yellow cream. Add a pinch of salt, half a cup of sugar, a little tiny splash of vanilla. Now I'm going to zest either the entire or half an orange. This is around how much I'm adding. I'm going to mix it until it is all uniform. As I was doing this, I was talking to my grandma. Hi, grandma. She sent me an entire list of directions of what I should be doing. <laughs> and she sent me the consistency that I need to be going for when I'm making the egg white cream and I really should get on it because the egg whites need to be pretty cool when you're still working with them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little sprinkle of salt and half a cup of sugar. I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of um, vanilla extract. And we're going to mix this on high speed until it looks exactly like what my grandma told me it should look like.
The easiest way to tell if it's ready, there are no little particles of sugar between your fingers when you rub it when you're done whipping. That is the consistency that we're reaching for. It doesn't have to have stiff peaks. It doesn't have to have any type of peaks because it still needs to be pretty runny. Just as long as you can't really feel the granule, granules, granules, granules. And now you have to work quickly so that the egg whites don't fall. I'm going to put this aside. You're going to go grab your yellow cream and you're going to start assembling. You need to make sure that all of the layers that you're doing and you're dealing with are cooled because if you don't, this is what happens. Um, I'm going to let this one cool just a little bit more. So this is going to be our bottom layer. This is going to be the top layer because it's the prettiest one. And the secret to figuring out how to layer it is as long as the white one is the last one, that is what matters. We're going to start layering. So because the white one needs to be the last one and we have eight layers, the first one that we're going to do is the yellow. The good thing about this is that it is a pretty forgiving type of situation. I cracked one of the layers when I was transferring them from place to place. But that is okay because it can go on the inside and no one would know. It's okay if some of it is spilling to the sides, it's kind of actually desired. So don't worry about that. But I'm not really worrying about the shape of it as much because we're going to cut the sides tomorrow after it's had the entire night in the fridge to soak. So don't worry about the shape either because we're going to cut around the sides and you're just gonna eat the sides with a cream. Very important part is getting all the little broken pieces that you got from cutting away the dough. So this is what it looks like in a bit of a close-up. As you can see, there's cream spilling out from different sides, and that is okay. It's going to soak overnight. You can also let the scraps and both of the creams, I mean this one is probably going to go bad because it's going to fall, but this cream, it's really delicious, so you can leave it for a little snack, have it as a little treat after all of your hard work. This is the final version of the cake. I'm now going to cut a slice of it and show you what the inside of it looks like after it's been chilled overnight. comments and I am going to eat a slice of what I've created. It's so delicious. The orange zest that was added into the buttercream adds so much brightness to the flavor. The pastry is flaky but soaked through. It doesn't seem too dry. The egg white meringue topping also makes such a huge difference. The salt that was added adds a little bit of um, richness to the flavor that would not have been present there if there wasn't any salt. It's so much fun to make. It is such a cool process. Um, it is not heavy on equipment. You are able to do all of the things present by hand if you have really strong arms to whip up some egg whites. It's a delicious, wonderful dessert that you can have with your entire family. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this video and happy birthday Ari. I hope you had a wonderful birthday and there are so many people who love you. So this little cake is dedicated to my little sister Ari. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment below if you have anything specific that you would like to see me bake. Let me know what you would want me to add into the videos. Let me know what you would want me to implement in the videos if you would like to see some other type of content. I'm open to all of those things and I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy during these really difficult and trying times and um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!